Hello everyone, welcome to Rockstar Gaming, my name is Eric. Today, Simon Games has announced their next entry into their United system of games. Uh, it originally started way back when with the first Marvel United, then went to the second entry with Marvel United X-Men, waiting currently for the third entry, Marvel United Multiverse, to finish production so it can ship. But they went ahead today and announced what is going to now be the fourth entry into the United series. So let's go ahead and take a look at the little bit of information we know of DC Heroes United. All right, so if you've watched our previous series on various Simon uh, campaigns that have been out over the last year plus, uh, you know, we usually start on the landing page for the campaign. Today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently and going back a little bit farther to where the origins of this game came from. Uh, with all that said, if you guys do like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you have not already started subscribing to the channel and then hit the notification bell because we are going to be doing quite a few videos on this one topic, especially in the summer when the campaign officially launches. So let's go ahead and get started. We are actually back at update 81, Hope at World's End 4, Deceased, a Zombicide game. This is the first mention of a new United game coming out. This was back on November 30th of 2023. So that is December four months ago at this point, four full months ago in like random days um, here and there. Most of this update we already covered in the live um, uh, live discussion on these updates when they were coming out. Uh, but all the way down here, right here, is where they decided to tease us with the next United. It says, this campaign is over. And again, we're in a DC campaign talking about this. The campaign is over, but who knows what else the master plan might have in store for us. So this was the first hint that a new United game was coming out. And so, and because of the fact that it was announced in a... Um, DC themed game from CMON and not in some other game or whatever basically led most people to believe that it was going to be a DC comics related game for another United game. We did a video kind of speculating on other things that possibly could have been, but at the end of it, we were pretty confident here that it was going to be DC United. Now it's not DC United it is DC heroes United because apparently DC United is a soccer slash football team somewhere. I didn't do much research into that, and I'm sorry if I just lost all the soccer fans for not knowing that information. With that said, what we're going to go ahead and do in this video is take a look first at the trailer for the video, because there is a trailer that came out on YouTube. We're going to take a look at that real quick, and then after that, we're going to go over to the campaign page over on GameFound, not Kickstarter this time, and take a look at the minor reveals that have been shown, because even in the splash page, they the preview page for the game is a lot more uh, intricate slightly than like a Kickstarter preview page would be. Uh, so there's a little bit of information in that one that I felt worthy enough to us do a video on. So let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started. I did turn off the sound just in case for copyright and all that stuff. When evil threatens the world, lots of stuff burning in the background there. We got a villain there, another one there. And another there. Wonder who those are going to be. The League Must Stand United. So DC Heroes United. We're going to see the obligatory shots of the characters. So we got Batman, of course. Then we're going to have Wonder Woman right there. And then we've got Superman right there. And DC Heroes United coming to Game Found. So that is going to be it for the trailer itself. Before we leave the trailer, though, I do want to point out a couple of things. We're going to go back here to the part where the world is threatened. So, and see who we can kind of identify who these are going to be. So we already know, well, let's go back a little bit more. So pausing right here, we already know this one right here with the silhouette is going to be Joker when we actually look at the preview on the game found page we are going to see joker's menu and that's going to be the spoiler right there but the only villain we've seen accurately is going to be joker 
Next one we do see is this one right here. Now, most people between the Facebook groups and the 200 plus comments that are already on the game found uh, page, uh, most people I believe are thinking that this is going to be dark side. I tend to think that they're not gonna necessarily throw dark side out in the core box. The original Marvel United, um, the main three characters that were in there as far as villains go were um, uh, Red Skull and Ultron, which both were in major Marvel movies at the time. And then you had Taskmaster, who, though, was in Black Widow. I don't I think by the time the Marvel United campaign, if I'm remembering the before times correctly, uh, the Marvel United campaign came out first at the beginning of 2020 and then I think right when the campaign ended is when the world turned upside down and Black Widow's movie got pushed back like six months or however long it got pushed back to so I don't um so there was a minor character in there I don't think DC Heroes United is going to necessarily throw the three biggest guns as far as villains go out there because this is we clearly know that there is Joker we clearly when we go through a little bit more here this looks like it's going to be, I keep pausing at a weird moment, this looks like it's going to probably be Lex Luthor um, in the game. So that's a given with the Superman connection. Uh, and then Lex Luthor was also a main character in Deceased as well. Um, so there's that. But I really think that this one right here, can I get a better, there it is. I really think this one right here, especially because like he's got these like weird ears over here and I know I'm like being nitpicky with it, but just these little ears over here and depending on what era they kind of go with with these costumes, I, I then tend to think more that this is going to be Mongol who's, you know, uh, he's a yellow lantern. Uh, he's got the whole war world thing going on through there. Just the way that I know he was drawn a lot in the 90s, it looks like that headpiece thing that he had back in the day. So I tend to think this one is Mongol. So that's just my theory going into this right away. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the actual game found page and see what is on there. All right, so we are on the main page right here. This thing scrolling just scrolls on its own. I can't get it to stop myself, but uh, it does look like we are going to be getting a free gift. If you follow the project, you get an exclusive metal two-faced coin with your pledge. So there is that, but here we are. DC Heroes United showcasing on the cover, of course, the big three, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, um, and showing that this is going to be jumping on Game Found in July 2024. So we are just now starting April, so all of April, May, June, and then how far into July. So you basically have three to three and a half or so months before this is going to hit. Hopefully it's after 4th of July. I don't know why. It's not like it's a gift giving holiday or anything like that, but you know, uh, th there's that. So looks like we do have this uh, uh, double sided two face coin that you do get if you hit the follow button. I haven't hit the follow button myself, but there is that. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. At the moment, it looks like there's about 212 comments on the game, and there's over 4,608 people who are following it. So that is. Pretty interesting right there. We are gonna have one to five players in the game. Says it's gonna take about 30 minutes. Most of our playthroughs of the United System have been about 30 minutes now that we've gotten into a good groove of it. And in order to fight the forces of evil in the DCU, you have to be 14 and up right there. So it says here, build your team of legendary heroes to thwart the master plan of the most powerful villains in the universe. Simple rules, deep strategy, easy setup, quick playtime, variable difficulty, eye-catching artwork, and amazing miniatures all united to bring you the most fun dc play experience so there is that so we've got the joker right here we've got superman batman and wonder woman one of the things i do want to point out and i have not read dc comics since part way through the rebirth era uh for anybody who has read through comics as far as batman and superman's characters go i stopped reading before spoilers before batman was supposed to have married catwoman and i stopped reading superman sometime i don't remember the storyline's name but it was sometime during the rebirth era when 
Superman's memories got reconciled with the whole, like, trying to reconcile the whole New 52 version of him with the Pope pre-crisis version or pre-New 52 version, all that stuff, whatever. I think I can't remember what it was called. It was something with an R. I can't remember now. Like, re wasn't Rebirth, Reborn, something like that. I, I think it was Reborn. Yeah, it was Superman Reborn. I'm looking at the DC Infinite app right now. So uh, is that four-part storyline that went through Superman in Action Comics during Rebirth. Um, but yeah, the costumes for the characters to me look like they're somewhere in that era, especially with the yellow, um, uh, the yellow lines around Batman's bat symbol there. I think that was the costume that he introduced at the end of the new 52 after he came back when Jim Gordon was running around as Batman. Um, uh, that's more of the line with the costume that, that Bruce had at that point and then going into the rebirth there. I don't know how long that costume lasted because again, I stopped reading the books at that point, but looks like it's, they're going for like a rebirth art style here. So we'll see how that goes. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the player board they have. And this is a shot that they have in every, um, uh, Marvel United campaign and it is no different than in this one. Some familiar things we can see. My mouse is on the board. Yes, it is is we do have the punch, the uh, movement, wild, and heroic action tokens. I was thinking to myself, man, those look a little different, but that's because we use the plastic tokens. Over here on the channel, we do have the regular health and all that. So they are playing as the Joker. There's a couple, they're not playing as the Joker, they're fighting against the Joker, that's what it is. Um, the board here itself, kind of looking at this, one, we get to it later, Batman has like five bajillion gadgets. Um, it, like because they're basically taking the equipment concept that they um, introduced in multiverse and looks like everyone is going to be getting potentially a lot more um, uh, equipment cards here. Batman is showing three down here at the bottom. Wonder Woman is showing three down here at the bottom and another image later on is going to show that Batman has quite a few other cards. Some things though to note on here that we have like all the familiar thugs and all that stuff is first of all, right here, if you can see my mouse moving around, right there is a different um, mission card than in the other United games. Um, Marvel United started with just, uh, was it clear threats, clear civilians, and defeat thugs as the three main missions. There's a Cerebro mission in the X-Men version. Fantastic Four has the Doombots um, in there as well. So there's a couple of different extra missions um, to change the gameplay as you're playing through Marvel United and the Guardians of the Galaxy had the um, Plan B missions where you basically can just complete those missions instead of actually fighting the villain off. This one has whatever this extra green card is right here. I don't know if that one's going to be specific to like the Joker or something else, but it is a new mission type that has this one through four counter on here and uses... Um, this green cube, which means that apparently DC United, uh, DC Universe United, DC Heroes United, that's what it's called. Don't know why they didn't say DC Universe United, probably because it'd be the DCUU, maybe. Um, but anyway, so that's gonna be a uh, green cube to go with the other, was it clear blue, silver, and uh, I think spider versus red. Uh, I don't remember, I think Apocalypse has his own whatever. Um, anyway, so that is different right there. The mission guide looks different as well. I tr I've tried to zoom in on this and it just comes out blurry the way they put this image. I still think this is the villain goes after every two cards. They made this look in a specific, um, a specific style here with the fact that it's red and has, uh, this, uh, I was gonna say green, this <laughs> yellow and black bar surrounding it. But that also does correspond to this box down here under the BAM effect for the Joker. It's kind of hard to see in the image, at least in what I'm looking at in the this monitor of like the uh, recording. Whereas I'm looking over here at the actual web page, um, they look a little bit more similar here. But I feel like this and this are similar. And there's some symbol here which probably mixes with something with Joker. There's also a couple other symbols on the cards down here. And also, yeah, like there's this other red symbol right down here on the Joker's BAM uh, here on the storyline. Again, I can't read it. Even if I zoomed in, it would still be a little, um, I can't zoom in on the way I have the, the window here, but if I put the window to full screen and still zoom in, it gets blurry when I try to get that close. 
Um, so there is that. Also, Joker and Superman over here have green effects on their cards, which I'm being an old man and get really close here. Um, Joker's Bad Love, it says the Harley Quinn henchman can't be damaged by heroes with any crisis tokens. That looks like it's going to be like a persistent effect that as long as the card um, is in the storyline, that effect is going to be there regardless. Um, and you can't see it from here. I did zoom in a little bit earlier. The effect over here on the Superman card looks very similar to the image that's on the Joker card. So it looks like Superman possibly also gets an effect. Again, I'm not sure this is all me looking at cards and not having any idea what, they, what they're saying. Um, then you have tactical analysis over here from Batman. It says, during any of your turns, flip this card to flip any master plan card in the storyline. So basically... Um, during any of your turns. So basically you put that down and at some point in the game, I can just flip that. So basically I have it on the board. I can flip that and, you know, flip the bad love card um, right there. So that way it's no longer affecting the storyline. That way we can actually attack Harley Quinn. And I can't read what Harley Quinn's um, card says, but she is definitely a, um, a henchman character. I was going to say minion, but henchman character in the game, at least for Joker. Um, so yeah, there is that. So these are all the things I am glancing at with the way these cards are um, designed here. So that is pretty cool there. Like a little bit of changes to the way the game is actually played. We got a new mission in here. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, down here is what the miniatures look like. Again, these miniatures are pretty cool. I don't know why they gave Wonder Woman a cape. I know in some media she does have one, but I like... I don't usually, again, it may, it may just be the comics I've read, but I don't always really see her in a cape with a sword and a shield. That's usually something more for like, I always see in promotional stuff. There's probably comic issues where she has them, but these um, figures look pretty cool. Superman looking a little bit more imposing. Um, really like a lot of height to that, to that figure right there. Um, I am a little bit, um, uh, especially with Batman and Superman, I do wish they would have done more of like classic suits, but, um, well, we'll, we'll talk about some of that stuff later, but anyway, so there is Batman right there. There's one of them right there. We've got Batman's five bajillion, um, cards. You got the battering right here. There's a grappling hook right there. There's a lie detector. I think is the name of one of the cards on here. Um, so that's going to be Kind of interesting so he's got one two three four five six equipment cards on his own um i don't think anybody in multiverse or spider geddon has that many i think penny parker has three like the three batteries in her and at her disposal but like no they don't have that many um things and then uh, Diana's got bracelets of submission right there. She's got the lasso of truth and then a third card to be determined later. Joker over here does have this, uh, uh, he's standing on this Jack in the box, which I'm pretty sure Simon put out an April fool's teaser of this, where it was like, uh, a Jack in the box. I had the Simon logo on all the different sides and they basically saying, Hey, we're going to announce something tomorrow. And I think some people took that as going to be, um, the announcement for this game. Uh, let's see. Special rules. Joker can't be damaged or defeated until all three missions are complete. So there's going to be that uh, difficulty right there for him. He's got Harley Quinn. Deal one damage to each hero in Harley Quinn's and both adjacent locations. This card one civilian from each of these locations. And then more words. Joker is going to have a starting master plan card. And he is looking like he's going to have his own... Um, uh, Joker minions, those are probably going to be, I wonder if those are going to be like civilians that get turned into Jokers, like like the Joker, like the fish or whatever, like the fish in the cartoon. I remember that happening one time, I think, um, like Joker gas turning them, turning people into Joker smiles and stuff like that. So who knows? It's bam, each hero in Jokers and blank and adjacent locations turn face down their earliest something card in the storyline. So he's flipping cards early in the storyline, earliest cards in the storyline. So it's kind of like Modoc's ability a little bit with that. 
Um, let's see. So the next line here, DC Heroes United brings the legendary heroes and villains of the DC Universe to the highly acclaimed United game system. So this is kind of like Power Rangers behind me where it is the... I, I can't remember the name of the system, a guardian system. That's what it is. Um, so it looks like they're basically just naming the system United. So that way they can basically adapt it to other games. I did see a post somewhere where uh, Andrea Treviso, the designer of the game, I probably butchered his name, did state that, um, again, the games would be compatible with other, the game would be compatible with other games in the United system. So, so far, because the components look exactly the same, um, or some of the components look exactly the same, I don't see um, kind of like the will they, won't they of deceased with Marvel zombies. I This is more than likely 100% compatible with the Marvel United games, especially because I don't think they're going to, I don't think they would separate this game, especially because you wouldn't be able to play it with like, then essentially three fourths of your collection. They, they would have to have made it to where it was compatible. So it looks like it is going to be compatible in some way. There's probably going to be something somewhere where, um, you know, there's like certain things that won't be compatible, kind of like with even supervillain mode from X-Men. There's a couple of, um, I think Kang is one of them. And then there's somebody else that you can't play supervillain mode with them because uh, the way the, the villain plays doesn't make sense to be controlled by a player in that way. So, uh, let's see what else was on the page here. There's some, uh, uh, Top 100 games of all time from the Dice Tower, Golden Geek, Board Game Quest. Uh, some testimonials there from Z Garcia. No one's asked me, but I think uh, Marvel United is tops. Uh, we started this channel with Marvel United, so there is that. Uh, the United system is being refined, optimized, and explored to its maximum in DC Heroes United. Villains and Heroes alternate adding their cards to the storyline, each with multiple effects. Heroes unite, combine your actions to do the impossible. Basically, I put down these cards as Batman. I also get those cards as Wonder Woman. You've seen our videos. If you haven't, shame on you. Rescue civilians, defeat thugs, and clear threats to finally take on the villain. Or play one versus all with a player controlling the villain. So, again, superhero mode or supervillain mode there. We do have commander solo mode, which is exactly what it's called in spider Geddon and... The other one, uh, Multiverse. So this is going to be the third core box of the now five. If you count DC, basically, if you're counting DC United is just United season four. Um, so it's going to be the third one with Commander solo mode. So the Shield solo mode slash Xavier solo mode from the first two games doesn't look like what they are going to be carrying on um, going forward. It looks like they're happy with the Commander solo mode. Equipment's coming back. Many heroes have their own unique equipment cards, giving them access to extra abilities. Grapnel. I don't know why it says grapnel. Grapple. Anyway, cape wings right there. Lasso of truth. Oh, we see what the lasso of truth is. Use on your turn if the villain is in your or an adjacent location. Look at the top card of the master plan deck. You may place at it at the bottom, then turn this face down so that's what the lasso of truth does we can look at the top card in the villain deck that will be cool then we do have the big child creatives painted miniatures right here again with that yellow line around there with the way the belt is on superman no red trunks um we are definitely i believe someone can correct me down below in the comments but i believe this means we are getting um uh rebirth style characters because that costume of superman doesn't necessarily look like the um new 52 version and i don't again i haven't read the books in quite a while but i don't feel like they're going to be trying to market new 52 uh at this point uh anything they do is going to be more trying to market um the rebirth post rebirth era right there and then we got the joker right here and honestly that <laughs> i'm not knocking the design whatsoever the joker looks like the tim drake version i think it's tim drake from the return of the joker movie from batman beyond um like the tim drake from like the flashbacks and everything that that, that to me for some reason that's what that looks more like and that is honestly creepier than if it was the actual joker like uh, just the way that looks to me like that doesn't look like joker joker that looks like 
you know, uh, Tim Drake going crazy right before he killed the Joker. Joker. Um, so there is that. Uh, let's see. Follow the project to get an exclusive metal two face coin with your pledge. Why would you need a two face coin? You ask. Well, you never know what choices lie ahead. Dot dot dot. That is the end of the um, uh, the page right there. So that is all the stuff that we have and know and whatnot from um, DC Heroes United, not DC United, not DC Universe. United. I will probably it's leave right there. I will probably refer to this as DC United still whenever we talk about it. I'm trying to get used to that DC Heroes United. Uh, this the logo is spacing looks weird, but overall looks pretty good. Everything looks neat. I'm very interested to see what changes this is going to bring. We don't even have multiverse yet. That's the other thing I wanted to bring up. So crap, I don't have it on in front of me though. Uh, I did pull up the do a cut right now so i can look for it all right so if you did get marvel united multiverse and you're getting the updates from the kickstarter campaign um update number 130 came out on march 29th where they were giving a production update as well as showing the finished boxes for the multiverse core set and the annihilation box um uh, in that one they did say heroes unite production is finished and now assembly of the boxes is being done so everything's built for marvel united multiverse product assembly should be finishing by mid april followed by assembly of all the individual backer pledges which should be done by late may then shipping can begin we will keep updating you as things progress so basically they're filling the existing boxes with the product as needed and then that should be done within two weeks so of when i'm recording this and then late may is when followed by assembly of the individual backer pledges. So basically whatever you ordered is going to your individual box getting packed up. And then after that shipping will begin and we'll, we will keep you updated as things progress. If the game can ship by May ish. Yeah. Done by late May. If they can get those things on a boat by the end of May, there is a chance by the end of June, beginning of July that DC or that Marvel United multiverse will ship, which means hopefully people will have gotten in their um, pledges when this starts up. Now, if you've already played through Marvel United season one, season two, and if you did or didn't get the first two Kickstarters, uh, if you did get the first two Kickstarters, you already played through the system. You already know, especially if you got the second one, you already know you like the system. There's a bunch of changes coming in with equipment into the third season. So, um, That'll be interesting to see how that dynamic plus cam, uh, campaign modes, which I didn't even think about that going in here until I started talking about this DC or Marvel, Marvel United Multiverse did introduce campaign modes. Are we going to get campaign modes into this? And um, that would be kind of interesting if they're going to do that for season one, especially if they're going to do like a season two and season three of this, because there's enough DC characters you can do potentially probably a second season. I didn't think you can do a third season of Marvel United. So they can probably do a second, third season of DC heroes United. Um, and then each one of those campaigns could do, um, a, um, campaign on their own, like a bunch of different campaigns on there, like the campaign decks we haven't gotten yet for multiverse. Um, hopefully they can do something like that with this. Again, if they're going to do it as stretch goals, that's perfectly fine. Um, and then like the team decks and everything like that's another thing i wonder in here are we gonna again get it as a stretch goal or are we gonna get the like the justice league team deck in this box would a uh, bat family box have a bat family team deck in there like the, the the team decks that we have again we don't have them yet but they were part of the uh, multiverse campaign adding in all the different um decks for um uh, like the Avengers, the uh, X-Men Blue, X-Men Gold, all that stuff, um, giving us more options for how we play the game. Are they going to throw all this into the core box? Are they going to throw those into stretch goals? A lot of things that we will get to as far as predictions go once the campaign gets a little bit closer. Um, also, are we going to have Darkseid in the game? Or are we going to save him for some kind of an apocalypse box? Because the other thing I was thinking about, too, is that, again, the difference between this and Lane Deceased is that deceased whereas every character you're going to show is going to be a like a figure in this a lot of people can be a lot of characters can be um 
uh, henchmen. Uh, for example, I mean, I'm sure we're going to get Harley Quinn as her own villain, more likely an anti-hero character, but she's a henchman for Joker in this. Um, with um, Darkseid, even if he is in the core box, does that mean that we're going to get just Darkseid and then like Granny Goodness and Assad and those characters as just his henchmen? Or are they going to be their own characters um, on their own? Even in X-Men, Magneto has a bunch of his brotherhood as cards and henchmen, and then they are in other um, uh, stretch goal boxes and other stuff in um, throughout the game where there are their own figures. So, um, like I said, United is a little bit different than like the Zombicide system with how they're going to do that. So it's interesting to see where characters are going to show up. Usually it's going to be like one villain to, at least in the original releases, one villain to three or four heroes but after multiverse and like the different character um uh pack outs that some of those boxes had it's gonna be hard to, to guess what is going to be in each box um so we'll do all those later on down the road and as far as how i'm going to be handling uh looking at the campaign if you have watched any other simon videos that i have done especially on multiverse especially on white death and deceased uh there's one or two others in there as well um, basically my, what I try to do on that one is if they do developer updates by basically showing us new mechanics in this, I will probably do another update video at that point on that later on down the road when the campaign starts, I'll do a day one video and then do another video whenever they announce a new expansion, kind of talking about all the other stretch goals that they introduced between expansions and whatnot, and then possibly do a, um, uh, live depending on. Um, I schedule do a live video on the last day counting around the around the uh, ending time, which is usually around 9 p.m. Uh, if they stick with the um, Kickstarter schedule that they did for the other three campaigns uh, or the other campaigns, basically at 9 p.m. or before 9 p.m., do a live video where I basically get to talk to you uh, about how the campaign went and all that stuff and take a look at the final updates. So that is my plan going forward. Again, if you don't want to miss any of that, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to know when those and other videos are coming out and uh, comment down below with what you think is going to be in this game. I would love to do, uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a refresher, but I would love to do a prediction video of the things I think are going to be in this video. I will probably do that closer to June. I'm honestly going to say I probably do that more like in June, I'm not going to do it right now because again, we've got even right here, we have a bunch of stuff that we have no idea what it is. Uh, I got symbols down here that I have never seen unless I, unless it was a multiverse. I just didn't notice it during 500 videos we did during that, but we've got a whole new mission right here. We've got these red boxes. I have no idea what any of this stuff is. Hopefully they do a dev diary soon. That'll probably be when they do another video in this series. So be on the lookout for, for that. Um, I've already said the thing about liking and subscribing, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish the video right now. And thank you guys for tuning into this one. I have been Eric. This has been Rockshire Gaming. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.